So now uh, we're going to hear from Jim Alifax. Did I say that right, Jim? Yep, you did. That's the way it sounds. Yay. So, you know, no matter, funny, no matter how big of a group I, I talk to, I, I get nervous initially when you start. The biggest group I've ever talked to is 85,000 people. Wow. That's a little bit daunting. It's a concert hall. It was like know. the citrus bowl yeah. type of a thing. And so, but um, I, I just want to give you a quick little background on how this all came about. Two days ago, Rupert and I were having coffee in the afternoon, and we were talking about some of the stuff we've been doing with UCF. And I said, what really got me involved there was I was actually invited to do a presentation at the exchange, and it's a business presentation for students. And to this date, it was still the most well attended event because I titled my presentation Eight Life Changing Lessons That You'll Never Learn in School. And today, what I did was in the last less than 48 hours, I was able to turn around and I kind of customized this from speaking to students to speaking to entrepreneurs and people that have already been in business that, you know, that we all are. So, trying to share the screen. Okay, great. So you do that. That's good. So I want you to think about this when we get started, okay? So there's really two types of economies in this country. Two economies, two tax systems, right? Two types of people. 95% of the people in this country get up every day, every morning and go, what can I go buy today? 5% of us get up every morning and go, what can I supply today? How can I add value to the people that I deal with? Them? Okay. Most people, if you think about it, what are they doing? They, you know, let me put it to you this way. If you were to somehow your finger got cut off, how much would it cost you to replace your finger? Million, a hundred million, a billion dollars? You can't ever replace your finger, can you? Right? How can people go out there and they're selling their lives to somebody in retail or whatever else they're doing for a fraction of what it would cost you to replace your finger? People don't understand. There's something that drives us as entrepreneurs to get us where we are different, you know? But the thing that I've learned through the years is that entrepreneurs all kind of come from a similar situation. I don't think all of us are born that way. You know, we may start young mowing lawns or doing things that will end up helping us get that idea of, I don't like to work for somebody else. But then when we're working for somebody else, what happens? Somebody goes, you know, you're a great cook. You should open your own restaurant. Mm -hmm. All right. And what do we do? Oh, we go in, we open a business and start a business. But what happens? You don't investigate what it consists of to make that happen. We don't find out what tools we need to help us be successful. And most men, most entrepreneurs, what are we? We're independent thinkers, we're mavericks, and we sure as hell don't want to go get help from somebody do it. Right? And that's the worst thing we can do. So what this presentation is designed to do is kind of help maybe change a way that you think a little bit as an entrepreneur and, and help point you in a direction of some things that you can do to help improve your business as we go through this. So with that, I wanna share with you eight life-changing lessons that you'll never learn in school. And these are principles that work if you're willing to apply the principles, because let's face it, most people are unwilling to do what those of us will do to go to work and make things happen. So the first one, you have to understand, being an entrepreneur, you have to be 100% responsible for your life. It's a prerequisite in your success. Too many people out there, and I see it so much today going on with kids in school and everything else. What are they doing? They blame everybody else for something that went wrong when it's really their responsibility. And I have to explain to my daughter, there's sometimes where you might be in a position of leadership or a position of authority that what happens is, even though you didn't personally create the problem, there's times you have to accept responsibility for that because you're the leader. And if you're unwilling to do that, then you don't belong in a leadership position. Okay, go back and punch a clock for somebody else. You have to remember, we're not entitled to a great life. We create everything that happens to us and we give, you know, we cannot 
We have to give up our excuses for blaming. We have to accept that responsibility. Remember that at any time that an event happens, the way we respond to it is going to determine that outcome. So what do I mean? Okay, so if you're in the restaurant business, you're supposed to have a big event going on this afternoon. You're waiting for a shipment to show up from the supplier. The supplier's truck breaks down and you don't get your shipment and what do you have to do? You gotta go pay retail for the food that you have marked at a wholesale price and you can't pass it on to the, uh, you know, to the vendor, to the uh, clients that are coming into that group. So what are you gonna do? How are you gonna respond to that? You're gonna suck it up and do it, but some people don't. Some people will sit there and bitch and moan about it. And now all of a sudden they've got a bad attitude that's rubbing off on those people that are coming into their venue. And what happened? They just lost however many people are there because they just lost that many customers. And not only that many customers, but what happens? Those people are telling 10 or 12 other people, oh my gosh, you won't believe what happened at this restaurant the other night. Okay. One bad response as a business owner can kill everything. Okay, I don't know how that just happened. Um, okay, and act as if, remember, we always have the power. We can make it different, we can make it right, and we can get the results that we want by having the right responses to what we need to do. Something that you can do to help keep track of these things, I really recommend. I started journaling about 18 or 19 years ago. But it's just as you go in and you interact with a client or you do things, keep a track of things like this. It's a great way to be able to go back. And I love going back in my old journals and looking at stuff and going, oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot about. OK, it's a it's a step by step process. Remember, journey, uh, your growth as an entrepreneur, your growth in business is a journey. It's a step by step journey to get to where you want to do. But this is a great way to help you with that. So. Remember, your life is the fruit of your own doing. You have no one to blame but yourself for where you are. Next, personal growth separates those who succeed and those who don't. Have you ever upgraded your phone, your TV, your car, your computer, your home? Of course we have. We've all done that. But how come we don't ever think about upgrading our minds? You know that more than 80% of students that graduate college never pick up a book and read again? They might read some magazine, they might read some fictional magazine or some fictional book, but they're never thinking to themselves, what can I do to improve this muscle in my head? They don't do it. And as a result, they go back to blaming others. How come I can't get ahead? I want these guys who are making all this money to pay for me, okay? Um, if you don't meet, see, hear, or read something new, you don't learn anything new. And the most important thing to remember from this is if you upgrade your skills every day and you upgrade your skills as you go through, you're creating more value. You're becoming more knowledgeable and more valuable to the marketplace. And what does that mean? That means that you're going to make more money because you're providing more value. So many times we as entrepreneurs forget that. We get focused in our own little lane and we just continue shooting down there and we don't think about anything else that we need to do. So how can you change? Turn your car into a rolling university. Every 60 minutes, if you drove 30 minutes one way and 30 minutes back and did nothing more than listen to a good audio, something from Jim Rohn or somebody like that or Tony Robbins or things, okay? If you do that every year, that you're looking at 260 hours a year, which is the equivalent of five and a quarter college courses in one year, just driving to and from work or driving to and from appointments. You think your life could be different a year from now with all of that knowledge as a business owner? Hell yes, it absolutely can. Another thing that I always suggest, read 10 pages of a good book every day. So what's a good book? One of the best books that I love reading, I've read it probably a half a dozen times, is a book called The Slight Edge by Jeff Olson. And I'm going to talk about that in a little bit more. But it is an incredible book that will help put things in perspective as a business owner. So if you think about it, that's 300 pages a, book, a month, which is 14 books in the course of a year. Okay, anybody can read 10 pages. It doesn't take that long to do. It's a matter of getting that discipline and that habit 
of doing things that will help you become successful and then attend one type of a live event every year, something like a Grant Cardone or Tony Robbins, whatever you need to learn and study to help, again, expand your thinking and your brain. Jim Rohn said, formal education will make you a living. Self-education self makes you a fortune. Another thing, the, you know, who knew the Cheshire Cat was so intelligent when he had said to Alice, if you don't know where you're going, any road will do, correct? So we need to know where we're going. So many people that I sit down and counsel a lot of times don't understand the importance of laying out goals, laying out a direction. Where do you want to go with your life? What do you want to have happen? Why did you get in business in the first place? What was it that made you start your business? Okay, what is that driving force that helps you move in the direction that you need to go to? What is it that gets you out of bed to take care of your family? So you need to write goals. We've all familiar, familiar with SMART goals, right? I can make them smarter because on six and seven, you need to go back and you need to evaluate your goals regularly. And you also need to reward yourself. It's important to set up some kind of a reward system. If I, I want to do A, you know, I want to hit, I want to talk to this many people this month. I need to make this many phone calls this week, all right? What does that look like to get you where you want to go? Reward yourself. Set up something. I'll take my wife out. If I have to make 500 phone calls this week, if that's your goal, then if I do it, I'm going to take my wife out to dinner. I'm, we're going to go to a movie. We're going to do something. Because out of that activity, that lead measures, right, that's going to create revenue of some form. So it's important to continue that. And the last part was put it on a dream board so you can see it. If you want to buy a new car, what do you want to buy for a car? Go to the dealership and test drive it. Get in it. Get that new car. Smell. Okay? Experience it. One of the things I always love doing is when they had the dream home things where you could go out and you go do the dream home tours. I loved doing that because of all the gadgets in the house and things that I may want to add into or that you want or don't want in your own house experience it, absorb it. Your brain doesn't know the difference between this is reality or this is just in my brain. How many times have you woken up in the morning or sometime in the night in a cold sweat because something was going on that was chasing you or something was bothering you? You weren't in any danger. You're laying in bed sleeping, but your brain doesn't know that. The same thing with setting goals, okay? And envisioning what you want. When you do that, you can help and it tells your brain, I've already got it. Act as if you've already got it. Okay, develop a thorough plan, reverse engineer. What do you want? What do you need to do for activity? You know, know your numbers is really what it comes down to. Take out all out massive action. So many people sit there and go, I gotta prepare for this and I need to, I can't do that because, well, just do it. Ready, fire, and then aim, okay? Go back and reevaluate where you are and what you're doing. Manage the track and adjust, as I said. Journal all of it and have a mentor, culture, accountability partner. It's critical to have that. It's critical to have a sounding board, somebody you can talk to that can help you grow in your business. And review, review your goals twice every day in order to be focused on achieving them. Les Brown says, get up in the morning, read your goals, and read them right before you go to bed so it's the last thing you're thinking of before you go to sleep. Really important to do that. Talking about the slight edge. Slight edge is really a secret ingredient to success. It's your philosophy. What is your philosophy in life and business? How are you going to get where you want to get to? What are your daily disciplines? You know, what are those little things that you need to do every day to get to where you want to get to? With me, I know I need to talk to at least two people a day. I have to sit down and be able to share what I do with at least two people a day to get to where I want to get to, okay? My goal is five a day, but I know I need to talk to at least two. So <laughs> the thing is, so your daily disciplines, many times they're easy to do, they're easy not to do. And as you do them, just like if you were putting money into an investment account, right? 25 bucks a month doesn't seem like a whole heck of a lot of money. But in a couple of years, all of a sudden, you got 10, 15, $20,000 sitting there. Oh my gosh, where did that come from? Well, the same thing with doing daily disciplines in your business. What can you do on a day-by-day -day basis to help you get to where you want to do? 
Okay, it doesn't seem like you're making any success. Uh, it doesn't matter if I go out and walk today. I don't feel like it. And then you make excuses again later. And what happens? You start getting sick. You're not healthy. Okay, so focus on that. Successful people understand the little choices they make matter. So they do them over and over again until the compound effect kicks in. And once that happens, the compound effect is amazing when it happens, because all of a sudden you're getting phone calls from people that you talked to six months, six years ago. Hey, are you still, how can you help me with, and it's unbelievable, you know? So it's just a great thing to be able to do. And if you were to look at the slight edge on a, on a graph, this is what it looks like. The things that you do are uncomfortable in the beginning, but they become comfortable. And the more you do them, the more success you have. And conversely, if they're comfortable early to just say, nah, I don't need to do that anymore, it becomes uncomfortable. But you can apply this principle to all areas of your life, not just your business. All right, there's one quality which one must possess to win, and that is definite of purpose, the knowledge of what one wants, and a burning desire to possess it. Napoleon Hill, one of the best quotes ever out there. I'm sure you guys are probably familiar with the cash flow quadrant. Unfortunately, this is where most of our society lives in that employee area. All right. What they don't understand is that they're the most highly taxed, they're the most taken advantage, and literally it's modern day slavery. Do you know that when in the 1860s, what after the emancip uh, Emancipation Proclamation, when Lincoln let the slaves go and freed the slaves, that they were not called slaves anymore. They were called wage slaves because they had to pay them. And now through time and everything that's going on in, you know, in the country today, it's now you're a teammate. Nothing has changed, okay? It's a matter of what do you want to do to get to where you want to get to? The other thing is people become self-employed. Self-employed is like a Tiger Woods or a specialist or you know people that are working on your own. What people forget about is as a self-employed person, if you're not working, you're unemployed. Okay, my friend Frank always put it this way. He said, you're the only asset that you have. He said, to, to create true wealth, you need to build assets. And if your asset isn't out of bed working, your asset is broke, right? And that's what people forget. So what do you need to do? You need to help yourself move into how do I create investments and not putting in money into a 401k that the boss says that they set up for you. Just understanding how does the market work, investing for yourself, what works for you, what can help you make money, learn and study that stuff. And then really ultimately is to create a true business. That's what we're all here for. All right. We want to create a business model that allows us to systematize our what we're doing so that we do not have to get up every day to go to work to make money. We want to be able to create a reoccurring stream of income or an override income that allows our business to function. So if we need to take a month off, we don't have to worry about our business closing because we're not there running. So how do we continue to do that? We should all be some form of incorporation, understand that cash flow and cash are king. Um, tax advantages, understand if you're not taking advantage of tax advantages as a, as a business owner, I talked to a guy yesterday. He's a self-employed business owner. We got a conversation and I said to him, so do you own an office or do you work out of your house? He said, no, I work out of my house. Customers don't come to me. I go to them, blah, blah, blah. And I said, so are you writing off an office space in your house? Did you write off your mileage to show up here? He goes, no, what do you mean? And I had to explain to them the tax advantages. Do you know that by owning a home-based business or working out of your home, that you can save a minimum of four to six thousand dollars a year in taxes. That's money that you put back into your pocket. I have another friend of mine that says if you're not doing this, you might as well take a twenty dollar bill, crumple it up, and throw it out the window every day, because that's what it amounts to. Okay, so keep track of that stuff every time. You know, and if you do things right way, I haven't had to pay for a vacation literally since 1991 when I first learned this because I've been able to write off every single vacation that I do as a business expense. So it's great to know that. And know and track your numbers, like I mentioned earlier, lead and lag member, lag 
indicators and understand estate planning and wealth transfer. We don't need to get into that. If you're trying to create a company, it's like baking a cake. You have to, you have, to have all the ingredients in the right proportions. Another thing that's important, avoid personal guarantees. How many of us as business owners have signed a loan or a credit card linked for our business and used our social security number? Every single one of us has done that. You know, when you do that, you know what happens? Why do we set up an LLC or a corporation? We set it up because we want that corporate veil, that protection as a business owner, right? But when you personally guarantee something, that LLC is no longer protected because now it's you personally. So it's important that you understand how do you turn around and how can you create true corporate credit so that your ass is not on the line if something fails in that business, all right? It's the business that fails, then you don't have to worry about it. So corporate credit and personal credit, they're not the same thing other than that they're used to help approve. But corporate credit is scored from zero to 100 where personal is 350 to 850. If you use personal credit, it takes a long time to build it and they only want you to use 30% of what you have. The more you use commercial credit, the more money they wanna give you. And you can get 10 times more business credit than you can personal credit. So if you can only get $5,000 in personal credit, but you understand how business credit works, you're talking $50,000 worth of credit, okay? So that's important to understand how that stuff works. Business credit transfers with the sale of the business. It is an asset. Understand that if you as a business owner want to sell your business and you have business credit established, that is an additional um, valuation of your business, which can now all of a sudden get your business a whole lot more money. Just the way it works, because it'll, it's now the, the business credit transfers with the business. Okay, I'll give you a great example. When I was in the mortgage business, I wanted to buy the company that I was working with because Joy was leaving. She really had nothing to sell there. She had a database that she didn't harvest. She never marketed to anybody. She had a few leases, which I'm not responsible for if I don't want to take them. And she wanted a couple hundred thousand dollars for literally a worthless business that was worth about $25,000. And we had to sit down with her financial planner and the financial planner had to explain to her that you have nothing to sell. Her. But if she had commercial credit or other things in place, all of a sudden she makes a real business. If she'd been harvesting her database, don't forget that your database, you need to market to your clients, okay? That's reoccurring income for you, depending on what you're doing. The more you do that and the better you are at systematizing that, the more you can sell your business for in the future, okay? So establish true corporate credit. Jeff Tomasulo says, when you become successful, you can run out of crap to buy, but you will never run out of people to help. So remember that that's what we do. Financial statements don't matter. Cash flow tells the story. Understand there's three primary ways to make money. Trade your time for money, override and passive income. You guys should all know what that is. I won't get into that too much. But I can just tell you that um, passive residual income is the way to go. If you can set your business up where you can get residual income, it's great when you have checks just showing up in your bank account every day and deposits just showing up. It's kind of a nice thing. I don't have to worry about it. Okay, and it's something I needed to do when I was in the mortgage business. I went through the whole mortgage mess, and in 2010, I thought we made it through. And then that recession hit, and I had to start over again at 49 years old. And I, and I, that's how I really got into learning a lot of this, really applied a lot of this more than what we had been doing before. So understand that in any business, you have sales and marketing, deliver the product or service, and collecting money. If you can systematize these you don't have to worry about showing up to work and you can create as many outlets as you want. So how can you do that on your business? What do you want to do to make that happen for your business? So to get rich, you have to be making money when you sleep. Be proactive, not reactive when building your business. This should say number eight, sorry. See, Rupert, I told you, you gave me not enough time. Misunderstanding costs money. 
Small businesses have the same problems that big business do. They just don't have the resources that big businesses have to succeed. But, you know, or to deal with things. How do business owners take care of legal issues? Search Google. Oh, I've got a buddy who's an attorney or my family member's an attorney. Well, how many times can you ask them for advice, number one or number two, if they're a family law attorney and you need help with business law or contracts, are they going to be able to give you legitimate advice? No. Heck no. Okay. So it's important to understand that you need to have access really to somebody that can help in what you're calling about, or they'll end up paying a high hourly fee and, and bite the bullet. You know, one of the biggest complaints I get from business owners when I sit down and talk with them is they go, I just can't justify picking up the phone and having to pay $100, $200 for a 10 or 15 minute phone call. Most people I know I can't. I don't like to have to do that and I don't. All right. So use a legal service plan. They're all approved by the Florida Bar, by the state, okay, by the state bar, by the National Bar Association. It's a great way to have a lot of services for a small monthly fee that all business owners need. Did you hit the more dots down there and hide that panel? Uploading. Okay. They provide us affordable services that every business owner needs. So that's the thing. They actually did the uh, Chief Justice Lombarga back in 2014. They were really concerned with what was going on in, you know, legally in the court system and everything else. And he got a bunch of business owners and other judges and attorneys all together. And they came up with the idea that they said, well, this is the best way. For, for people to be able to help themselves, not only business-wise, but personal, so that they can have representation. Let's face it, we don't. You got to check your wallet before you check, you know, before you know who you're going to call. So those are important things that we want to look at. Now it won't. All right. So, and also understand that there's really two types of attorneys out there. There's what they call fighter attorneys and what they call business attorneys, builder attorneys. Fighter attorneys, we all know. You see their faces plastered all over the billboards all over the city. Okay, They're the most expensive attorney, but that's what most people are used to having to deal with and most business owners are used to having to deal with. Why? Because we're reactive. We're reactive by nature. Oh, we get something that comes in the mail and go, I don't know what this is. And I throw it on the back burner. And two months later, you get a notice that said, you're in default. Whereas if you'd have had access to a builder attorney that could review that document for you and tell you what that says without having to pay two, three hundred, four hundred dollars to do that, would that make a difference to a business owner? Hell yes, it sure would. Okay. They can also help with risk mitigation by something like that. Time management and delegation as business owners. How many times do we get off track of what we're doing? You know, most entrepreneurs and most business owners, when we start a business, we were, might be good at sales or we might be good at, you know, whatever it is that started that business. But because we didn't think through the process and nobody helped us through with that process, all of a sudden we're not doing what we're good at. We're stuck over here doing paperwork and, you know, right? Junk that we hate to do. So we put it on the back burner. You can outsource a lot of that stuff and, and make that happen. And another thing, cash flow uh, issues. Another thing, if you guys have employees and stuff, you should seriously think about creating a business power of attorney. What does that mean? If you're laid up, you're out of work, you're in the hospital, you can't make decisions, who in your company is competent enough to make those decisions for you? You need to give them some type of authority so that if they're dealing with a supplier or somebody then go, look, I got a power of attorney. I'm, the, I'm in charge. So-and-so is in the hospital right now. He can't help. Okay. It's important to have those type of things in place, but most people don't. Tim Ferriss says, I think whenever you feel reactive or being reactive as opposed to proactive, that inherently consciously or subconsciously, it creates a lot of stress. So ask yourself, how are you living your life? Okay, there's three ways to live it. We can live in fear, we can live in anger or frustration, or we can live in joy, peace, and contentment. That's why we all got into business. 
That's why we all do what we do. We didn't want to be under somebody's thumb. We need to be able to, you know, get these things that provide and um, provide for us in what we do. So this is who I am. I own Keystone Financial Company. We're a business solution specialist. I partner with a number of different companies that help provide services to business owners. Okay, so that's what we do. I do commercial lending from small, unsecured, ten thousand dollar lines of credit up to couple hundred million dollars. I've got a project right now going in Aruba that's $15 million we're working on. And we have another one um, up in Ontario that we're working on. I'm JD Euroway is an international lender that I partnered with. I'm good friends with the US vice president and I know the president of the bank. We do a lot of international projects and, and national product. Jay Gall helps with the credit and establishing business owners credit, helping them set up credit for themselves so that they are not personally liable. You guys have heard of Legal Shield. I work in the business division and the broker division. So what I do is I go out and I help set up insurance companies that want to create an additional stream of income for their clients, okay? And I work with business to business to show them how they can save money on legal needs and things. And that same thing with identity theft. And we also work with their employees and groups and group benefits. And UFS is the unsecured funding source, which I have worked with for almost 20 years now, that provides unsecured lines of credit and things to help businesses get the credit they need and get the cash they need to be able to move ahead. But do you understand that that's personal guarantee, whereas working with Jay Gulls can help you establish true business credit where there's no more personal guarantee. And that's it. So thank you very much. Yeah, that was wonderful, Jim. That talk about a blueprint for people that want to start a business. Absolutely terrific. I, I just want to add one little thing or just as a point of information. If you're going to sell a business, you have to do it through a business broker. They're the only ones who legally can earn a commission from selling a business. Now, business broker has a real estate license. Right. So basically, anybody has got a real estate license can do that. But there are specifically business brokers out there. They can evaluate your business. They know how to do this. They've been doing it for years. That's who you need to go to to do something like that. Absolutely true. Sure. A question and a comment. I'll say my comment first. You mentioned something about putting people in place and not wanting to pay because you didn't see a value in that. When I first started my first company years ago, uh, I met an accountant. And when I met David, he says, you know, I'm an ex-IRS agent. He goes, we can work in the red, we can work in the black, we can work in the gray. Basically defining where do you want to take your risk, right? I've been with this gentleman for 25 years now. And every year, my wife says the same thing. Why do we pay him $350? Why does it cost so much? Well, anytime I have a problem with the IRS or the government, he takes care of it. I don't have to worry about it. Send him a letter. He sends it off. It's taken care of. Um, if I got any questions about any of my taxes, he takes care of it throughout the year. So the point being is you may not think it's a value until you get rolling and you start running into these certain things. And all of a sudden, it's a huge peace of mind to know you've got something in the corner. That, that'll take care of you. And yes, you got to pay them, but the peace of mind is incredible. And I, I would agree with that. And that expense is also tax deductible. Correct. 100%. Which is important. I, I had learned a lot of this when I was in 1992. I was teaching scuba in South Florida and I was running a dive tour down there. And I had one of my students happen to be a retired accountant for Forbes Corporation. And he and him and his family were private students, and Rich was opening his own practice down there. And he said to me, it's about tax time. He said, Kevin, done any taxes, I'll do your taxes for you. I said, okay, great. And so I gave him my stuff, and about a week later, I get this phone call. Get your ass into my office right now. Okay, why? Just get over here. So I went over, and he sat down and explained to me, because how I was getting paid was I was getting an hourly, plus I was getting commission, but everything was being taxed like I was on a W-2. And he said, Jim, with what you do as an instructor, you need to separate those two. Talk to your owner and ask them if they will pay you your commissions on um, uh, as a W as a 1099. So that, that way you can take advantage of all of this, 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 this all of these deductions. And he actually had run a comparison for me. And I looked at it and I almost cracked. You made an extra five thousand dollars that year. I should have. But <laughs> but they 
but from then on, but you know what? It's funny you say that. In the since that time till today, I figured out conservatively, I have saved about three hundred thousand dollars in taxes. Okay, because somebody took the time to educate me on this, and that's why I think it's so important. As for what I do, I love to go out and be able to share and help people and show them. If they take advantage of it. Fantastic. If they don't, that's okay too. That's their decision. But they can never come to me later and say, You never told me about this. How come? Yeah, but my question is you really got me intrigued with this uh, taking a loan against your business versus personal because yeah. I'm trying to find financing to grow my business and extremely hard right now, right? And small businesses and the old adage you got to have money to get money loaned. So I would like to find out more about this idea that I can have a, I guess from what I understand, a line of credit yep. that's established with my business, yep. which then if Denny wants to buy my business, that line of credit goes with him. Your credit scoring, yeah. That's, I don't, we don't have time, obviously, to get into it, but I'll be happy to talk with you yeah. after. But yes, anybody can do that. And the beauty is it doesn't matter how long you've been in business, you could be a startup. And you can start establishing corporate credit today that can help you. And it's not a long process, okay? It takes eight to 12 months, depending on how aggressive you are and how you want to do it. And once you understand the system, but the credit analysts and the people at Jay Galt work hand in hand with the businesses that we bring in, and they will walk them through the process and help them get to where they need to get. Is to. there a direct correlation between a company that takes on business credit? versus somebody who takes on personal credit as far as the success of that company? I don't understand that. So if, if I took that step to get business credit, yes. do you see that my success would be more trackable than somebody like myself not who's taking on personal debt who's trying to build their business because I have more um, accessibility through my business credit? Right. So well, I can actually grow stronger, faster, better? Yeah, if I had to try to do this on my personal credits. And I'll give you a great example. Absolutely. And I'll give you a great example of that. I have a friend of mine. I've done loans for him since 2006 or so when we first met. And um, he called me and said, I want to set up a line of credit for my business. You know, I'm pet grooming, pet food retail outlet. And his credit wasn't that great personally. So he went through, tried to jump through some hoops, and then I was introduced to this. And I said, Carlos, you need to take a look at this. And he sat down and looked at this. And within, literally based on the cash flow of his business, we were able to get him a $10,000 EIN line of credit the second he got signed in and signed up and set up his account. And then we walk him through, and he's going through the process now, he has about $300,000 worth of EIN credit tied to his business that he didn't have before on personal and that he would never be able to get personal. And that's a revolving line of $300,000. That's a revolving line in his case. case. Yes. yes. And what was the time frame for that? Eight months in his case. And in, um, uh, also remember that on business lines of credit, it's not like a credit card. Okay, you get terms when you borrow money as a business, pay in 30, 60, 90 days. So you pay in, in terms typically, not you have to have this minimum payment every yeah. day. day. Big, big difference right. in what's done. And when you get business credit, okay, let's say you have $5,000 you want to use, pay off that $5,000. You do that two months in a row. By the third month, if you said, I need a little more credit, they'll look at it. Boom, yeah, we'll give you 10,000, we'll give you 15,000. Again, showing responsibility. You try doing that on a credit card, it's gonna tank your scores. And, and business credit is not tied to personal credit in any way, shape or form. They have nothing to do with each other. Very so, interesting, thank you, I yeah. appreciate that. Well, and it's a matter of risk too. Right. Whether well, you're risking your personal money versus somebody else, you can always redo that to somebody else. Why do we do that to, do that to yourself? That's part of the problem. Exactly. Yeah. You know, I, I I deal with a lot of entrepreneurs and, and small businesses, and it just kills me when I, you know, every every time I go out, almost every time I go out, I'm like, don't you collect your receipt, right? They don't understand that, you know, every if if you go anywhere 
and you talk business about your business to anyone, you take the, you get that receipt, you write at the top of the receipt, you know, I say BGV, the business or VE or whatever, the business that I'm doing, the person, the name of the person, and then I have a code for what did we discuss. Right. Okay. Put that on, you, you, you put that in and you save that. And then at the end of the year, when you do your taxes, you go through that list and, and you've got all that verifiable, right? Because when you, if, if and when you get audited and it will happen sooner or later, when you show them that box or that, that you know, I use one of those coupon holder things, you know, the multiple projects. And you show them that, they just go hallelujah. Right. Yeah. And, exactly. and, and and so, you know, you can it's it can for most for the vast majority of small businesses, that's the difference between paying taxes and not having to pay taxes and getting a refund. Absolutely. But when I take my wife out, we sit at the bar. You know why I sit at the bar? Because I want to talk to the guy next to me. <laughs> <laughs> take out the business card and tell him what to do. We're gonna have a conversation. I say, and write it up. Today, tell me. Guess what? I just got a free meal. And you write off, you write off that receipt and the gas right. and the car expenses to get there. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And that's it. And your card, when you have true corporate credit, your card doesn't say business because business is a hybrid and it's personally guaranteed. Mm -hmm. Your card should say corporate mm -hmm. on it. And that's how you know you have true EIN corporate credit right. when it's done. Did you have a question? Um, not really a question, but a statement. But um, I'm in financial services, so for me, like I scan everything mm. because receipts, especially with the, the oh yeah, they fade. Yeah, they fade. Mm -hmm. So I scan them in. I track every single thing. I you got make three phones. You must be like a picture. <laughs> <laughs> I have two businesses, but my my financial services and also have coaching side. So I have a phone for that. I have a phone for my travel agency, and then I have my personal phone. So therefore, everything is separated. Right. Nobody in listen. That bill goes over there. That bill goes over there. <laughs> this receipt goes over here. That receipt goes over there. I have three different financial apps for the three different businesses. So I track everything. Track everything because you never know where, what you can write off. Like I actually use my home to. Coaching, I just realized I could actually rent my home 14 days out of the year yourself. to myself. For, for, I was like, oh, 2020. Yeah, for proper board meetings, and you say. can also, if there's a lot of stuff you can do, so it's marketing tax deductible for a business, absolutely. yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, something about it, talking about the audit. One of the beautiful things about the legal service plans is yeah. that the business membership includes 50 hours of an IRS tax attorney's time mm -hmm. that will go with you to the audit and help you with the audit if you are audited. Yeah. And something I learned from having conversations with them, because I love being able to just pick up the phone and say, hey, I've got a question to an estate attorney or to the right. tax attorney. And the tax attorney had told me, he said, most people don't realize, but when they go to an audit without an attorney, they incriminate themselves mm -hmm. because 50% of the questions that the IRS auditor asks are illegal and they're not even supposed to ask. But how would you know that if you don't have an attorney by your side? So it's critical to have help. It really yeah, is. Nice it, it is. I do. I find the same thing. So I've, I've loved this service. I've had it since I was. Since 2006, when we've been members mm -hmm. and uh, saved us literally closing in on $100,000. I'll share one more thing I learned back in my early days of business. You have an upset customer. This goes back to one of your first slides about being responsible for yourself. When you get an upset customer and they're complaining with you, eat it. You just say, I screwed up. <laughs> exactly. Because they can't argue with themselves. Right. And so if they're going to argue with themselves, then you can look at them and say, I screwed up. Now, how do we fix it? And you can move on and you gain so much more respect from your clients. They're more willing to, to refer you. Uh, you took care of the situation and you owned up to it. So um, that's one of the big things I learned early on. And it makes a big difference. Be responsive, take ownership and solve the problem early.
Right. Like we're fighting about yeah. who's right or wrong. Okay. <laughs> always right, even when they're wrong. Exactly. Exactly. All right. So my yeah. question is, uh, what as a community? The, you know, two things that I'm really looking for. Obviously, I want to help as many business owners as I can. So if you know people that don't want to have to deal with personal guarantees or would like to be able to save some money, especially on legal services right now, we've got probably the two best services to be able to help out there. But the other thing is I'm also looking for people that would like to maybe make a little extra money on the, on the side, part-time, spare-time type of an income either through a referral process or even getting partially involved in working with us. I can do that anywhere. And, um, you know, the commissions are pretty good and we're, just, we're looking for help. I mean, the company's growing. I'm in 14 states and two countries right now. And, and I need help. So that's what we're looking for. Okay. Do you have an email address? Um, yeah, JG, I'll give it to you. Um, JG Alifat, my last name, A-L-A, -L like Frank A-T. JJ JJ Alifat at legal shield associates.com. Yeah, it is. You should have a QR code, throw it up there. You know what? I'm working on that right now. Yeah, Neil Schwartz is a friend of mine. We're just kind of finalizing what I want to have access to when I put that up. So, because we're using them now for group when we do go in and do a group. Yeah. School, you know, going to do a group or employee group, mm -hmm. they can scan the code mm -hmm. and it will link to their business and they can fill out their application right on their phone. It saves so much time. Legal Shield Just as a, right? Legal Shield a point of information, not only is you know, or an expert at putting together QR codes, his father in law is the guy who invented the magnetic strip yeah. for all the credit cards, and he's an expert with QR codes yeah. too, which is pretty good. And yeah, I don't know the bank software. Yeah. Uh, Neil Schwartz. Neil Schwartz and Schwartz and Neil and I forget Schwartz. Yeah. Yeah. Neil and Schwartz. Yeah. Neil and Schwartz. Yeah. 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 Teaching at Valencia Community College now, I just hired him back to teach all their people that do all their okay. events all around the country. He's an I don't want to get my uh, back. And he's also going to be running our show for us in 20 months. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you can when you do a QR code to do a link tree, L I N K T R dot E E, so it abstracts all the information links from your QR code. You can change all the links and links. That's how they make them. Yeah. yeah. If you want to change it later, you don't need to change the QR code. You can change the link behind. Yeah. All right. Excellent. Well, thank you very much. Okay. Jim. That was great. <clears throat> um, next week. Uh, we will be back here. Uh, it's the final uh, Wednesday of November. Uh, we are still looking for speakers. So if you have not yet applied and would like to, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, there's not much going on in the chat, but if you want to download the chat and you're online, go ahead. It's basically just uh, Tina saying, hey, I can't see the slides. And he's saying, Scott, focus on Scott's thing, because I could not get it all to work. Um, but join us on meetup.com. Uh, connect with somebody you met here today. If you were chatting with somebody out in the lobby uh, before we came in here, uh, get back with that person and uh, uh, you know, get a phone number, get an email, set up a coffee, set up a lunch. I'm sure Jim has lots of valuable insights. He would love to hear from you. Uh, talk to him if you want to meet anybody. This is how we build this community. So please connect with somebody. Uh, finally, if you did not, if you have not yet ever received a notebook and a pen from us, uh, let me know. We still have a few left. And uh, do you have a question or do you need a notebook? A notebook. Okay. And then, Sheila, I got notebooks for your kids, too. Um, otherwise, everybody have a great Thanksgiving. Give your families, at least the ones you like, a big hug. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. At least the ones At least the ones you like. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, we will see you all next week. Thank you all for coming.